here now and another great name that uh, a chance to reconnect with. Ted, good to see you and hear you again today. Great to see you too, Mark. <laughs> how, are, how are things at Zaner? Yeah, really good, man. Yeah. Uh, Do you, uh, you own the company yet? No, no. <laughs> I have to let the risk, Mark. But... <laughs> Well, let's get started here. Folks are saying, tuning in, they're maybe just joining us here. Have a few minutes during the noon hour and uh, central time to check out the markets. So let's uh, give them the information that they're looking for and look at corn uh, right now and uh, they see what the uh, corn market's been doing here this morning. Not much change last hour, down about a nickel. I'm going to run through these and then get your thoughts uh, specifically. But corn down five, uh, five and a half. Uh, all morning, and that's where it is right now. Soybeans down basically six to seven on those nearby contracts. November down four and a half. Those of you tuning in on rural radio, wheat trade has been the weakest of all, uh, coming back, but still down eight, eight and a half for the Kansas or the uh, Chicago trade. We turn to Kansas City, and it's down eight to over ten cents. In fact, the September down eleven, and then spring wheat. Uh, quick look at that. Back to Ted, then uh, down three basically three, four and a half on the front contracts there. So arrows lower here. Uh, Ted, your thoughts here as we head into a crop report, uh, a good or not, or important or not here on Thursday, but what you see in the markets here today. Yeah, Mark, you know, the report on Thursday is not usually a big deal. Yeah, we're going to be watching South American production and yeah, the USDA can make small changes on domestic demand. Uh, nothing changes on U.S. supply. We don't see next uh, new crop balance sheet next month. Uh, so the Thursday report might be not much. So yeah. we'll see. Um, yeah, as far as today is concerned, you know, you, you look at the longer term forecasts getting into later April uh, for, for Brazil, and it looks pretty good. Those rains keep getting sort of extended out further into the forecast. Mm -hmm. uh, concern about hot and dry coming soon or, or really cutting the tail end of this corn crop are starting to fall away. And you're seeing corn sort of respond to that. As far as our weather, yes, we have a lot more rain in the forecast than what we were seeing, uh, you know, 10, 15 days ago. But also there seems to be some windows in there and it looks like we've got a, a hotter, drier period that comes after the next couple of weeks of rain. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I don't think there's anything really concerning about weather. Uh, I know some people will talk about being too wet and planning delays, but I think it's really early for that. Yeah. So I think we're just kind of giving away some of that weather premium. Uh, and price action just doesn't feel great. Yeah, let's take a look at corn here once again, uh, down in, uh, over a nickel that December, uh, 468, but up to 473. And even then, some guys were, you know, obviously would like to get another dime higher than that. And they've been there, but uh, what about? Some people want to, if we talk to you today, get your thoughts on here, Ted. Uh, hey, this looks like the market might move lower. If you have some to sell and need to sell, let some go in here. What do you think? Yeah, I don't disagree with you, Mark. I know we don't love the prices here compared to where we were, you know, a couple of years. Yeah, but yeah. You know, it doesn't feel like a year where we really need to rally into planting. Yeah, the corn acreage number came in below expectations. But if I plug that into a balance sheet for next year, given normal, normal weather, who even knows what a normal yield is anymore? Yeah. It's more than adequate. We're talking a 2 billion bushel carryover again, most likely. Mm -hmm. uh, without that need for acres and without a weather concern in South America, we might not get this spring rally, or we might have ever had it, right? Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I'm worried that there's more downside. The price action doesn't feel good. We need some sort of spark, some sort of to turn this around, but we haven't gotten one yet. Mark. Yeah, very good. All right, Ted, we're going to tell you, uh, give you a break, and uh, we'll come back one more time. Check the livestock trade. Arrows pointing higher there. Ted Seifer joining us from uh, Zaner Ag Hedge, and uh, a long we haven't talked for a couple of years, but it's like old times in here. Let's take a look at the livestock trade. Get your thoughts here on a higher cattle feeder, cattle and hogs, and here we go. Uh, cattle uh, getting back toward their highs of the day, very close. June. Uh, well, we, we should probably do April. It's still on the board, so we cover it 181.20. Just a couple of ticks off of the high of the day, up $1.80. June, up over $2 now, Ted. Uh, 175.42. That's not too far from the high of the day there. Uh, feeder cattle following along, they've been higher all day. And indeed, April feeders are up over $2. 241, uh, 241.47, very close to the high of the day. And the May. 
up $2.82 and right at $240, and that's just 20 points off the high. This cattle trade wants to move higher here, and uh, let's let it. What do you think? I'm not arguing with it, Mark. Not at all. You know, it, this is a good day for cattle. Something we needed, right? A, a reversal higher. Um, we haven't really extended below some key support. Broke them, but we didn't really extend below them. Like 100-day moving averages for both live cattle and feeders. I like that we've got the feeders being the leaders here today, but it would be nice to see them up a little bit more uh, just to the next before we close. Either way, nice to see the green on the board in cattle. The lower corn trade isn't hurting that at so, uh, so yeah, go cattle, go. Yes, all right. I like that too. So that leaves us looking at the lean hog complex here and uh, higher, but not near as much. But I'm sure you have some thoughts here on the May contract at 98.60, up 72, and that June still up over 108 and been up over 109 at its high today. What do you think about that uh, lean hog complex? Yeah, you know the. I mean, really, all of it's been very resilient, but you'd like to see uh, a little bit more of an extension. I'd love to get May over that par, you know, get it over 100, and then we can feel pretty good about how that chart looks, not needing this, this bigger pullback from the psychological resistance level. Um, but it looks really good. And technically speaking, that hog market's been in a rally since basically the first of the year mm -hmm. uh, with, without any really big, deep corrections. So it's been a wide-ranging channel to the upside, uh, but it's really never fallen apart. So, yeah, still looks really good, and I like what we're seeing. If you got some hogs out there in the June uh, delivery, you want to do some hedging here now or wait for a little bit more of a jump? I mean, it, I, I'm always pro-hedging, Mark, as you know. But uh, look, <laughs> where we were on 3rd of December or whatever, or, um, or, or uh, the 3rd of January, these are some much, much better prices. So yeah. I, I think do some pricing in here. They're very good. Hey, Good to visit with you again. Good to see you, and uh, all the well with your uh, with Zayner Ag Hedge and uh, the uh, Seifert family. Thanks, Mark. Great to see you too. Absolutely. Thanks, Ted. Next time. All right. So that'll wrap things up here. We'll get to uh, see how the closes are tonight. Uh, real evening news, but Absolutely. Can, the uh, livestock hit it in their highs. You know, Top you're, of asking, the hour. you're asking Ted, you Ready? got a hedge? It's in the name. Ted, of course yeah, he's got a hedge. Yeah, Absolutely. That's, that's what we do. Yeah, cow guy close coming up at the top, of course.